This screencast covers how to use SFTP to recover a single file from the Crucial Backup System. We'll be assuming that you already have signed up for the Backup System via cPanel and now have full access to your backups. We'll be using a six-day-old file in this demonstration, which would be available for both the basic and premium backup plans. So the same steps will apply since we are using SFTP for the recovery process. In this scenario, we'll assume that some change was made to a file five days ago that has since broken the site to some degree. We need to restore that file to the way it was six days ago, the day before the changes were made. The first thing we need to do is begin a new restoration of the necessary backup date. Log into your cPanel and click the red Manage Backups button at the top right of the screen. This will take you to the Backup Restorations page that we are viewing now. The file changes were made five days ago, so we need a backup from six days ago to revert the file back to the way it was prior to the changes. So we're going to select the backup dated the 21st. We can see that this backup was taken at 2.37 p.m. Click on the Home Files tab to expand that archive, and then click the Begin New Restoration link. The system wants to know what we want to create a backup of. You can choose your entire home directory or a specific directory, but in this case we only need one file and we know the path to the directory that file is located in, so we'll just restore that directory which contains the file we need. With the Restore a Specific Directory option selected, and the full path to the directory to restore in place, click on the Restore button. Your backup is now being prepared, and you can view the process as it occurs in the left-hand side of the Backup column. This particular backup directory took less than one minute to generate and is now ready to access. The file we are going to be restoring is called mage.php and is located in the app directory of the Magento install. We've changed directories into the app directory and listed the contents of this directory where you can see the broken mage.php file. Let's first move the broken mage.php file to mage-broken.php so we can review any changes to that file later if we choose to. Now we need to restore the mage.php file from the 21st that we just generated in cPanel. In Shell, use the SFTP connection information provided on the backup page in your cPanel to make a connection to the backup server. The format of the SFTP login is very simple. It's just SFTP space user at hostname. We can now log into the remote backup server by entering this command. We'll be prompted for the SFTP password, which can also be changed on the cPanel Crucial Backups page if you are unsure of the password. We are now logged into the remote backup server using SFTP. Using SFTP, we need to enter into the directory we restored a short time ago and retrieve the mage.php file. We know the location of the restored backup because it is conveniently listed under the Restoration State tab. In this case, we have slash home slash app 8-21-2015. Now, back in our SSH session, we need to change directories in SFTP to the location of our backup directory we created.
and we'll go ahead and list the contents of this directory. And there is the mage.php file that we need to restore from, from six days ago. All we need to do now is retrieve the file using sftp's git command. We can now log out of sftp by typing exit at the prompt. We are now back at the shell command prompt where we can list our directory to make sure that the restored file exists. You can see now that the mage.php file has been restored from the backup system and your site should be running as it was from the date of the backup. Now that we have completed the file restore, we should do a little housekeeping. We no longer need this particular backup restoration, so we can go ahead and delete it now. Don't worry, you can always recreate it at another time if need be. Simply click on the restored backups and it highlights. You now have some options on the right hand side of the selected backup. We were just going to delete the backup restoration, but what if we decide that we want to keep this particular file and directory from this date for a much later date, say a year from now, just to be safe? This is where your archive disk space comes to use. The premium plan has 100 gigabytes of this archive disk space available, whereas the basic plan comes with 1 gigabyte of archive disk space. So regardless of your plan type, we can archive this backup due to its small size. Let's go ahead and archive this backup forever. It will always be available in your archive disk space until you delete it. Click on the Archive and Compress Restoration link. You will be prompted to enter an archive name for this restoration. Most times the default will be descriptive and serve the purpose. The optional description field is where you can enter some comments about this particular archive. Again, the default is very descriptive, but let's change this for demonstration purposes to mage.php backup from 8-21-2015 and click the Generate Archive button to start the archive process. You can view the progress of the backup page as it actively updates as the system generates the backup archive. You can see the time the backup was archived on the backups page by hovering over the entry. You can also see more detailed information about this archive by hovering your mouse over the archive itself. And there's our unique description we made for this archive. Now, if we scroll to the top of the backup page, We can see that we are now using one archive with 4.4 megabytes. This is also reflected in the disk space available green bar. The little bit of red at the left end of this bar represents how much disk space you are using of your available archive disk space. Back on the right side of the page, you'll now see a link to manage your archives. Click on this link to view and further manipulate your backup archives. Each of your archives will be listed in this window on a new line. You basically have two options from here. Get a link to the archive so you can download it or use wget or curl to access the archive or two, delete the archive. Deleted archives are not recoverable. So if you are deleting an archive that is six months old, it will no longer be available. You may want to consider downloading the archive using the get link option to store the archive locally. 
We'll just leave the archive for now for safekeeping, so click on the Close button to return to the backup page. With the backup now archived, we can safely delete the backup restoration that was previously requested. Scroll back down to our backup and make sure that the restoration is selected by clicking on the row. Now with the restoration selected, back on the right hand column we have a link to Delete Selected Restorations. We'll go ahead and click on this link to clean up this restoration. We could just generate a new restoration of this backup if we need to. We need to confirm. Now this restoration has been cleaned up and has been removed from your interface, but it still exists in the archive form that we created. If we scroll to the top of the page and click on the Click to Manage Archives link, we can see that the archive of this backup restore still exists. The archive exists on the backup SFTP server under the archives directory, or you could get a single use URL that exists for 15 minutes to download the archive. You can also create a permanent link to this archive, if it is something that you access frequently. This permanent link will be available as long as the archive exists. Be sure to check out the backup page in cPanel for in-depth how-tos and more information regarding the Crucial Enterprise Backup Solution. As always, if you have any questions at all that we can assist you with, please use our help desk located at support.crucialwebhost.com or send email to support at crucialwebhost.com.